Hi, and welcome to the Divinely Inspired Woman podcast. I am your host, Patricia Wald Hopkins. I am a modern mystic, and I am here to share with you the beautiful wisdom and stories from women that desire to lead their lives inspired by the divine within them. The Divinely Inspired Woman is devoted to walking the path of her soul's calling, tuning into the divinity within to navigate life with ease and grace through all circumstances. She cultivates beauty in her daily life. She is here to share the most authentic self each day through thick and thin. So I hope you enjoy our show today and that you will leave with a, an infusion of inspiration for your soul and for your day and living your life. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Divinely Inspired Woman podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Wald Hopkins. And I have a lovely, beautiful guest with me today, special guest, Sasha Rose. And I'm just going to introduce her a little bit um, with her bio here. Um, Sasha has been on the path of the mystic for most of her life. Yeah, I believe that. She grew up in a spiritual community and um, was involved with sustainable farming, um, on a sustainable farm focused on awakening the divine potential in humans. Oh, wow. Uh, she was introduced to energy medicine at the age of eight. Wow. And began sharing healing energy with animals and um, saw some really powerful results with that. She has been passionately studying astrology, meditation, and spirituality for over 30 years. She founded the Venus Wisdom um, in 2012 to offer astrology with an emphasis on the resurrection of the feminine principle in, and in support of embodying our inner wisdom. She has since um, been intimately studying, studied um, the Venus cycle and is sharing this wisdom with over, th um, over a thousand women. Wow. And she has developed a unique method for syncing with Venus as a tool of empowerment and liberation in these transitional times. <clears throat> she is a creatress of heroine, a journey of heart, a mentorship to guide visionary heart-centered women to learn to sync with Venus to activate their inner heroine and fulfill their sacred purpose. She um, was honored to be a featured astrologer in 2020 on the Astrology Hub and has been a guest teacher on Stormy Grace's YouTube Academy. So let's go ahead and learn a little bit more um, from Sasha about all of this beautiful work and the solar feminine and the power of that and the power of joining in global community around this. So welcome, Sasha. Thank you so much for being here with me today and with my community. Thanks for having me. It's really mm -hmm. a delight to be here. Yeah. Yeah. So tell, tell, I mean, I read a lot about your life, but tell me a little bit about how um, you live day to day as a divinely inspired woman. Let's start there. Mm, I love that question. Well, I am super blessed to live in an epic place on some epic land. And so I feel like a lot of my inspiration comes from connecting with the land, connecting with the sun, you know, waking up and getting to be with the light of the sun. If I am wanting to see Venus or wanting to see anything that's happening before dawn, just a short drive. I, I have the best view in the whole County of that Eastern horizon and everything that's coming up. And then I have a gorgeous view of the Western horizons. So a lot of the magic is nature-based. I feel like this connection with Venus and with the celestial bodies is really an invitation for us to root deeper into earth earth energy, you know, earth mm -hmm. and Venus are these twin energies. And, um, so I feel like taking this space is the biggest thing to 
be in nature, to go outside, to walk barefoot, to be with the plants and the birds and, you know, all the creatures. Mm. Uh, That's a big part of how I connect and really feeling that spaciousness inside of me, that knowing that's inside of me when I get out of my head, when I dive in deep, um, Mm -hmm. nature is very supportive for that process. And so I would say that's, that's a a huge piece and just being devoted to following the inspiration that comes, even if it feels impossible or, Mm. you know, like who me, (laughs) am I going to do that? Yes, I'm going to do that. So that feels like there's that fire element too, of, of really, saying yes to what I'm here to do and the big visions that I have, you know, to follow them and to keep following them with, with a certain level of devotion to the process. Devotion. I love that word. (laughs) It keeps coming up a lot this week, that (laughs) devotion to, to yourself, right. And, And to the mystery of who you are and how you're going to show up each day and not really know exactly what it's going to be right letting go of that head organization of how it has to look I mean I mean this is what I'm feeling when I'm speaking to you but I mean is that kind of the gist of how you move through you know I know you use the astrology and Mm -hmm. you know the Venus cycle in particular so can you talk a little bit about how you weave that into your magic you know of being um, divinely inspired each day Yeah. Well, a huge part of my inspiration comes from guiding other women into this work. So, you know, I get to, I I run that small group heroin and then I do sessions with women individually and I tend to um, a Facebook group. And now I'm starting to pull off of Facebook and have another group. So just introducing others and seeing what happens when I teach these mysteries, it feels like it awakens something in other women who are the right women. And it really doesn't have anything to do with prior knowledge or being an astrologer or knowing, you know, what is the feminine path? It feels like it's a discovery. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it lights up in the women who it's for. And that feeds me and nourishes me so much because it really gets me out of my own you know, my own way, because this is so much larger than me. And by saying yes to being the guide, I don't even feel like it's, you know, my, my work necessarily, but I am the facilitator of this process and this invitation to play at this level and to see who wants to play and who wants to be a part of this experiment. So I would say that those connections, you know, they are, I, I used to teach in person. I had this little, I started out teaching in this little womb office. (laughs) It was in the attic of a Victorian downtown here. And Mm. you could barely stand up straight if you were a tall person, (laughs) it's like this attic and we would all get it, get in there. And that's when I first started teaching about Venus wisdom, you know, over eight years ago. And now it's really, um, really morphed into this grand community over the whole globe and really getting to hear different women's experience on their land. You know, it's very Mm -hmm. intimate and it Mm -hmm. feels like this relationship to our land has so much to do with our own experience of what's getting ignited in our own heart, because the sacred mission is so vital. That's the the movement that is the feminine, you know, Mm -hmm. it's how am I moving with this energy? What are my actions that are moving from this deeper place, which to me feels like it's a new paradigm that wants to come on to the planet. And so those that are willing to not know actually have an advantage. I noticed that when people, women come into my space and and there's some men, but it's mostly women come into the space. And if they already have a lot of preconceived fixed ideas about what's this and this and this, Right. They're less available to play the game. So I feel like that's kind of the, the yeah. prerequisite is having an open mind and heart and to come in and be in a discovery process. So I don't know if I, I went, um, I don't know if I fully answered your question, but I would say that that inspires me because being an entrepreneur is not easy. I mean, right. let's get real. It's not like mm-hmm. it's, um, it's a, it's a whole journey. It's a whole initiation unto itself. And so how do we stay committed through the hard parts and, you know, 
really showing up to, you know, our potential every day, even if we haven't realized that yet. And I feel like a lot of that juice comes from seeing other, other women get ignited by something that I've <laughs> uncovered. <laughs> it's right. Just, yeah, it's yeah. Beautiful. Wow. Yeah. No, you, you, I, you answered my question in, in that, um, dropping into the mystery every day, right. Is the mystery of, of Venus, the Venus within you, yes. um, that, and I had the pleasure of, of, um, attending one of your, your deep dives that you held, um, the end of last year and identifying the Venus arch, like the archetype of that, that I held and that, you know, and the other women in the group. And that was just amazing. And, um, as I mentioned to you earlier, I'm still working with those energies. They're so deep within your body, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and it connects you to the, to the stars. Right. But it, it ain't, you're anchored in, in your body into, into the earth. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's really beautiful, um, work. And, um, so when you, when you work with the land, I'm, I'm just being guided here to ask you, you know, we all live all over the world. We live, you know, in different energies, you know, the land that I live on is, is, is beautiful. And there's also energies here that are really intense. And I know that's the case probably in a lot of places, right? You know, there's, there's the, the beauty of nature. And then there's the kind of mechanical, harsher metal energies of mm -hmm. man made yeah. things. And so is there something that you do or, or um, to support women to continue to ground into that feminine energy, regardless of, mm -hmm. <laughs> of what is going on, you know, or what you do every day? Yeah, I I love that you're asking this question because I feel like there was another part to to answering your last question. You know, what do we do? It sounds you know can sound kind of uh, conceptual, but really this place that I'm uncovering through you know I call it the feminine design. Of, mm -hmm. you look at a chart. There's a lot of different maps we can use. We can. Right. I, I don't hold that one is. You know, even better than the other, we have this smorgasbord where it's kind of an amazing mm -hmm. time to be alive <laughs> of all these mystery teachings. Totally. But yeah, this yeah. particular map, you know, it maps a place that we all know when we're in our own wisdom, the place where we connect with source. So source being the sun energy out there mm -hmm. and Venus being the connection energy. And then we are the earth. And that's actually what happens in the cycle. Venus mm -hmm. at the beginning moves into position between the earth and the sun okay. and transmits a whole theme that we're going to be working with for 19 months of the feminine mysteries. And if we're awake to it, we start to see it and go, oh yeah, that is what we're all collectively being invited to learn me as this unique feminine design. I'm going to have a certain quality to what that is, but then I'm engaging with that, but I can always find this place within me where that's happening. You know, it's, it's actually a place in our being that is that heart space. The heart is the container. And so often what I do is, you know, in my own life is I just simply guide my mind down by choosing not to know just yes. choosing not to know yes. and, and allowing the mind to go, okay, oh, I'm choosing. Yeah. Not to know. Okay. Dive into the heart. And that to me is like a muscle. Mm -hmm. It's like the more we strengthen that place, we're actually fortifying what I have come to call our frequency of pure love. That is what our, our feminine design is pointing us to. Mm -hmm. And there's no shadow there because that's the moment. That's the cycle we were born into when the sun and Venus united. Venus is in the heart of the sun, Kazemi. So there's this place that is just a pure love frequency that has a many, many different qualities for each woman, for each person. Uh, I mostly work with, with women. Mm -hmm. And so it is when we're in that frequency, we actually become purifiers for this time oh, wow. and space. That's and so amazing. I actually experienced that very directly when we moved into this 
this land and this house, my daughter's room had some really funky energy. Mm-hmm. And I felt, you know, she's a very sensitive being. And I just felt over time, I, I worked with that and we really shifted, you know, she also started to change things in the room and put up art and put up imagery, but it just, it was kind of a disturbing energy. I don't know if something had happened there. Mm -hmm. And over time we were really able to purify it. Now I feel like that, that room is the, the, um, one of the the best places in our whole property to go and to be, Mm. you know? And so it's almost like for us to show up as saying yes to that energy and being that energy and emanating that energy that is our authentically our own. We're not trying to be, you know, sometimes in women's spirituality, it's like, oh, I have to look like that. Or, you know, I have to be like that, but it's no, it's actually completely, completely personal. And when we fortify in that place, it actually can have a positive effect on the areas around us that are, you know, funky Mm. or, you know, um, just dissonant, you know, because so much of, what Venus is about is harmony and that sense of coherence when something is coherent, you know, Mm -hmm. and these places, the way that culture has been dominating and mechanical, they don't have that coherence, right? Something's off. Right. So we become the coherent being in the space. And I feel like more and more that is, has the capacity to change. Yeah. To change so much. I, (laughs) I, I'm really happy to hear you talking about, you know, this, especially for people who listen to, um, you know, my community who, you know, and including myself, uh, work in environments where it is very mechanic, it's mechanic, you know, it can be mechanical, um, you know, I, I work in environmental health still, and it's, it's different, it's a very, but if you can show up in, in your essence, you know, that energy, it softens and it opens people's hearts and it opens them up to solutions that are more harmonious for all right and so I I really love that you you do this work for people um Mm -hmm. because it's so needed to soften we need to soften (laughs) (laughs) yeah soften and open our hearts yeah um yeah I can you talk a little bit about the the qualities of, um, a woman, you know, the, the Venus, the, the heroine, that, that, that kind of work that you do just, just to give people a taste for that. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the, the feminine design, you know, it's really, um, the way this framework came to me over 11 years, again, there's that devotion, you know, I didn't ever think I would be doing this, you know, I (laughs) thought my big move was to become an astrologer and to finally, you know, do that because I could see that map was amazing. And, you know, I I am an astrologer, but I'm really extending this work to anyone and everyone, you don't know, need to be an astrologer. And it just has become the most interesting because I keep getting the message that Venus is the golden key into the mm. age of Aquarius, which everyone's talking about the age of Aquarius, if right. you're into astrology and now we're seeing it um, really come on strong, especially on, we're right at the brink of, for those that aren't astrologers, this planet Pluto, which um, moves very slowly. It's one of the outer, well, now it's a dwarf planet. Right. Thanks to Eris <laughs> got demoted, right? Thanks to the wild feminine, Pluto got demoted. <laughs> Pluto's cool. Pluto is still doing her thing regardless. Uh, I feel like it's also a very feminine energy. Um, can you say a rich giggle, you know, in the myth of yeah. Ananda, you know, she's got that deep, potent, Ooh, powerful yeah. energy. But that, that planet, you know, everyone's talking about that. It's really considered like a mover and a shaker. It's like, oh, oh I'm having a yeah. Pluto transit or, you know, Pluto's about to shift out of the sign of Capricorn that it clicked into in 2008 and has been in for this whole time and then is going into Aquarius for now 20 years. So even longer wow. because Pluto has a, um, you know, a, it doesn't make a circle (laughs) a wider shape. Uh So these energies of Aquarius have a very positive 
you know, utopian, you know, choosing a timeline where we're mm -hmm. actually in service to life and the organic nature. And that has the very negative dystopic. Okay. We all become cyborgs, you know, <laughs> we've seen all the movies and we're like, oh, wait, how did we get here? So there's something about this, um, you know, really this process of choosing to show up as we are as authentic, organic human beings that feels like that's part of the call of being a heroine. Yeah. There's something about, I'm not going to go with a system that's taking me to a place I don't want to live in that constructed world, you know, now mm -hmm. it's starting to come in, you know, this like world control, which used to be sci-fi. And now we're right. seeing more and more, you know, <laughs> they're starting 15 minute cities in Europe where you won't be able to go outside of your oh, wow. 15 minutes of your house. And, you know, just all these ways of controlling and so I would say that there's, there's a bit of a rebel spirit in the heroine who's like, mm, yeah. that doesn't feel good. And that doesn't feel like it honors earth and nature and, you know, the create creative geniuses that we are as humans. Like we, I don't want that timeline. I'm choosing something else. So I think that mm -hmm. that's a, a piece of it. Okay. Yeah. And hearing that call, that deeper call from within that heart call. Of like, mm -hmm. I'm meant to do something very sacred at this time. Like, wow, what are the chances, you know, that I would be born yes. during this transition? And I think what we're about to see in the next six months is change beyond what we can imagine with how quickly AI is evolving and how that's mm -hmm. going to impact mm -hmm. our world. And so being able to center within the transition being able to find that place within us becomes the heroine's journey. It's like, no matter what mm -hmm. happens out there, I'm in connection with this creative love energy within me. And that's what I can stabilize as things get even wilder. So I think that there's that spirit of adventure and that willingness to go deep, the willingness to feel truth, see, feel yeah. truth, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. not necessarily like truth out there in the world, because, you know, that's a whole it shifts process <laughs> with so many different messages and so much manipulation, but our own truth, am I willing to see the truth of what I do and not then beat myself up for it, but, mm -hmm. but to reveal it because that is the heroine's journey. That is the, you know, the Venus cycle and morning star. Mm -hmm. It's like bold and bright. She hears the call. She's like, I'm doing it. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm in fully I'm here. And then as she moves through and appears lower and lower and every month she meets the waning crescent, mm -hmm. waning mm -hmm. energy. Yeah. It's an invitation to let go of our conditioning. Mm. And to see who we truly are. If, if someone is really fixed and like, this is who I am. And yeah, they're probably not going to hear their call. And they're probably not going to take the journey. I would say those that are willing to live in the not knowing and continuously discover more of who they are, are going to get called to it yeah. and love it. Even if it's hard, it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. That's the truth of what I do. Yep. I do that, you know, like not fun. But I yeah. can look it in the eye and own it and yeah. let it dissolve in order to discover the deeper truth of, of who we are. Mm, that's beautiful. And so I just uh, listened to someone who's kind of like, I went down this rabbit hole. I was listening to this um, truther person that I found, you know, through this, this astrology conference that I just put on. And you know, he was talking about being an errant, you know, his, you know, he has kind of a wild theory. I don't know if you've heard the simulation theory. Um, I hadn't really gone into it that deeply, but one thing he was talking about was, you know, we have this system, we have things that are playing out in a certain way. And, you know, he goes in a whole other direction with it. I'm not even going to try to represent because I don't even totally understand it, but it really landed with me, the idea of being an, being errant, because mm. he was saying in the program, there's this reset point and everything that's errant gets pushed out because it's uh, not going along like a robot doing right. what's going on. And I was like, oh yeah, those are the heroines. There's something yep. errant about their nature that says, this isn't the true harmony. And I'm going to start to create it and find those that want to create it. And the errants are like starting to create parallel realities. I'm starting to yes. see like these alternative systems are being formed. And 
I feel like that's the true Aquarius genius innovation outside the box, you know, okay, that dominator world's going to keep going towards that path, but we're going to find a way to create and innovate, uh, you know, and, and live this parallel um, reality. (laughs) Yeah, no, definitely feel that, see that um, happening just by all of the, you know, different communities that have popped up over the last couple of years, especially, Um, yeah, finding another way. I love that. It's like a rebels of the heart, right? And and it's it's a very fiery energy. I can feel it. And I definitely feel that call myself. Um, Definitely feel always been a little bit of a revolutionary (laughs) (laughs) so I'm in my little parallel life here you know um and um what I wanted to ask you or or comment about that was um let me just see if I can tune into there was the rebels of the heart there's the parallel a uh, parallel universe. Oh my gosh, where am I going with that? <laughs> well, it could be. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> parallel paradigm universe. Parallel, yeah. <laughs> parallel universes. Oh, I know what it was. It, and you were when we gather together, right? As as women doing this mm. this work, I think it does create another universe. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we're actually creating, we're we're starting to create create that right right now um and that's why i feel like it's so important even for people to hear these messages like they maybe have never heard anything like this before but it wakes something up in them and they can deny it or they may be too you know worried about following procedure to listen but the more that we share it openly the more likely it is that people will hear that inner inner call right yeah absolutely and it's so beautiful I mean who would have dreamed it that there's this happening in the sky in this 19th month cycle that really supports that place within us I mean I really don't think I think my life would have looked completely different if I didn't discover how to work with that support because I had a very treacherous journey. I have a lot of Scorpio energy in my design. If you Mm -hmm. understand the sign of Scorpio, Mm -hmm. that's about going to down to the belly of the beast. And, you know, it's got that Phoenix energy of of dying in the ash and re-arising. And so, you know, I now feel that the reason, um, well, I don't want to say the reason that I had such, such a challenging initiation, you know, it definitely trained me. So it has this blessing. I mean, I I really wouldn't wish that upon anyone, you know, I had a oppositional parents and, you know, that's like our deep part when you get into our kids and protecting our kids. And when you have two different parents that have totally two different ideas about what Mm. protecting our kids mean, and you're clashing and, you know, the impact that has on the child, you know, so it's a very difficult journey. And yet it really trained me to find that place of courage within me when I was up against, you know, the, uh, the system that really strongly, you know, values that perspective, you know, I was the rebel. So the mainstream perspective that her father held and, you know, kind of that, that he really was, you know, the status quo that was Mm, mm -hmm. recognized as being the more of the authority. And so for me to find my own authority in that and say, okay, (laughs) you know, that is what it is, but that's not my truth. And this is what I feel I need to do to protect my child. And and that's valid too. Um, You know, really gave me a lived experience. So it's not conceptual. I'm not conceptually just saying, yeah, you know, this might help you. You could do it. It's like, oh right. yeah, this will help you. It, it helped me to find that place within me, that courageous um, heroine within me under circumstances that again, I wouldn't wish, I wouldn't wish upon anyone. And so where we are in that cycle right now is Venus as she started that union with sun on January 8th, 2022. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we're coming into, she's gone through her whole morning star, her whole underworld where she goes behind the sun and she's reappeared as evening star. And I, I imagine a lot of your listeners have seen her. Yeah. Um, she's <laughs> going to meet up with Jupiter and we'll be doing that shortly. And by the time this podcast comes, they'll you know still be visibly near each other. 
Um, and both of those are considered the benevolence. They're considered mm. the blessing planets and they're mm. in Aries, which is the, the first sign of that fire. Right. So it's such a beautiful time to reignite. We can always begin again. To me, that is the, the heroine superpower of Aries. Yeah to begin again, no matter what's happened, no matter what mistakes were made to really find like that, that there's an innocence in, in it's like original innocence can never be taken from us. Mm. And we have that opportunity to reset now with all the wisdom, everything we learned in this cycle and bringing that to bear to say, okay, now where do I want to put my energy you know, as we ride this cycle all the way through mid August, and then it's going to change signs and those themes will change with it. So it's been a serious cycle. It's been a deep cycle and, you know, failure was a part of the learning that doesn't need to be a problem. You know, sometimes failure is our best teacher and Mm -hmm. Capricorn energy is like, okay, you're going to fail. What are you going to do about that? You know? And so there's a certain, um, heart, (laughs) um kind of that discipline that that willingness to go up the mountain no matter Just what that going go that. climbing the mountain going that it's yeah. like no 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 don't give up this is now your time to reset make check in with your intention and move with what what are you here to do right now what are you wow. here to um to build to grow to create that's powerful i i feel that as you're saying that i'm like yes i i totally feel that in my life where I'm at right now too. It's just got to go the distance though. Yeah. Keep showing up. Yeah. And so much of it, I feel for women is these issues of self-worth and Mm self-esteem. It's just, it's an epidemic, you know, it really is that there's a way that we get stopped by that not feeling good enough. And that really got excavated during this cycle. And Mm -hmm. it's that, you know, Venus is our values which is what everything else is built on. So what are our core values and how can we recalibrate our life for this burst? You know, the fire of Aries is going to bring us into the fire of Leo at the end of the cycle, Mm. which is, you know, very creative energy. Mm -hmm. So how, how can we move with that? And really the, the, the energy of Aries is to claim that self-love to claim that self-love and to know that (laughs) we are worthy. The world needs us and not to disparage men at all, but in their conditioning, like when you look at men entrepreneurs and female entrepreneurs, they just, you know, kind of show up with this confidence. That's like when, when, and not to say not all women don't have confidence, but there's something fundamental. There's a way in the conditioning. I see so many women, so many powerful women, beautiful women, you know, women who had support or didn't have support. It's like at the root, this not feeling valuable, not feeling worthy. And, um, and I think that that this is an opportunity for us to really, again, look at that honestly Mm -hmm. and to assess that and to, there's nothing the matter with that. We don't have to fluff that over with positive thinking. We can say, wow, this is the way that I really wasn't valuing myself. This is the way that that old conditioning got to me. And now I'm willing to be reborn into through self-love, through valuing every step of the journey Mm -hmm. and to launch myself into whatever the projects are, whatever the movements are that we're here to do at this time. Yeah. That bigger vision, that, um, that Venus vision, right? Yes. Vision. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 I mean, that's, Gosh, it, I just, I could talk to you for <laughs> so much about all these pieces of, of, of the work that you do. I, I really love it a lot. Um, I wonder if you have something, you know, a little pearl of wisdom that you would like to leave mm-hmm. the audience yeah. with, um, you know, from yeah. all of this. Yeah. What's coming through is, you know, Venus and Capricorn cycle. So this entire 19 months we've been learning this if if we if we knew to look for it and knew to move with it and so i want to speak to the women uh, in whoever hears this that feel you have something big to do that feels impossible capricorn is about legacies 
Mm. And I feel like the revolution, you know, that would happen so quickly if women of heart and vision had all the resources they needed Mm -hmm. to create what they want to create. Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes that's what it comes down to is like getting chills here. (laughs) I want to start this healing center, but how would I do it? I don't have the Mm -hmm. funds. And you know, that's again the conditioning, the system would it's it's been gamed against um, you know, uh this conglomeration of wealth happening with the women that could change the world. But I just want to say, go for it. Even if it seems impossible, you know, go for it, create a legacy. Even if it's just one small step, like it feels like there's, there's resources that are going to start to become available as we share our visions. And as we begin to move with Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what can I create on the ground that represents this, And so just to represent it, even if you don't know how it's going to happen, to talk about it, to write it down, write your mission statement, what are you here to do, speak of it and uh, emanate that frequency um, because who knows what's going to happen as we move through this time of turbulence and change. And um, yeah, there's something about the whole nature of resources changing with Uranus in Taurus and that the money system's going away. Mm -hmm. So it's like us being committed to representing our vision, Mm -hmm. our heart Mm -hmm. vision. Um, There's a lot of value in that within itself. Mm, That's such good news. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Well, as we come to the end of our time here, how can people um, reach out to you and find out more about your work or, you know, what, what are you, what are you doing right now that you might want to yeah, connect. well, I just got done as I was telling you, I just got done with this guide, it's Secrets of Your Venus Sign, and it is the 12 signs of Venus with a way to discover what yours is if you if you don't know what that mm-hmm. is and you need to pull your chart. Um, so it's simply let's see what is the link here. It's venuswisdom.com is my okay. website, and then slash Venus guide. Venus guide. And uh, you know, if you put that in the notes or whatever. I will put that in the notes. Most certainly. Um, I'm really happy about this guide. And it really came through that class that you came to and looking at those different slides and then really refining it so that we can really feel each sign and starting Mm -hmm. with that sign and understanding it. And then there's some other value that I weave into there and you'll get an invitation to be a part of the circle community if that calls to you. So that's a really good place if okay, it's really resonant to connect yeah. in. Yeah, I'm, I'm connected in, so I recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so glad. It was such yeah. a blessing to get to have you, your energy and your presence in the class. And oh, I didn't even you. know that you did this podcast and I <laughs> love it. And I'm so excited to learn more about your work with Gaia. And mm. it feels uh, just so There's much resonance, so much a deep yes. resonance. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, mm, voices of Gaia. That's, that's my my body of work or what with the body of work I'm stewarding. <laughs> How's that? Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's a good way of putting yeah. it. That's how yeah. I feel too. So I feel like there's like a love affair between Venus and the earth. And I feel that right. love affair with your work. I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, because they're, affair. they're so interconnected, you know, mm-hmm. as above, so below and the place where they meet in the middle is in the heart. Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> definitely go visit her circle. Um, check out her guide. I, I have my picture of mine that I created during our class with you of my Venus uh, energies and um, Scorpio was one of them. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like to go deep. <laughs> yeah. 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 The well, I'm going to have to have you come back. Fly. Yeah. And, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was just saying the deeper we dive, the higher we fly. That's a lot of that Phoenix medicine. Uh, I love the Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, well, what I was saying is that I'm going to have to ask you to come back again um, sometime and we can talk a little bit more about Gaia again and and the the love affair. Um, Yeah. And if any of your listeners get you questions, you know, we could go over those. Sure. Totally loving to hear how this lands for your people and what what it inspires in them. So thanks so much for having me. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. It was fun. I like it. (laughs) But thank you everyone for tuning in to another episode and uh, continue to be divinely inspired in your life. 
being open to the mystery and the magic and the love that's all around us. Thank you, Sasha, so much for joining me. Thank you. Until next time, everybody. Let me see here. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Divinely Inspired Woman. Again, I am your host, Patricia Wald Hopkins, and I am so glad that you joined us here today. I hope you left with some soul food to inspire your daily life. And if you would like to learn more about my work, please check out my website, patriciawaldhopkins.com, and you can find out uh, more about um, my um, divinely inspired um, practice and tools. So thank you again. Have a beautiful day. Hi, I'm dropping in here with a announcement about a program, a new mentorship that I am offering. It's called Voices of Gaia, and it's about bringing your voice, your leadership, your life in alignment with Gaia's guidance. So if you feel called to learn more about this program, it's a beautiful, rich program where we dive into your essence. And if you so desire, we develop um, your uh, business around it and really um, blossom into your whole lifestyle, These, um, this wisdom from Gaia that wants to be spoken through you. So if you feel called, reach out to me at Patricia at PatriciaWaldHopkins.com. That's Patricia at PatriciaWaldHopkins.com. There's no hyphen between Wald and Hopkins. And I would just love to hear from you and see if this is a good fit. So thank you for tuning in. Have a beautiful day.